<laughs> Everything's put back on the machine, all tidied up. Got the hose wrap on the hoses up there. I'll take it back in the shop and show it all to you. I washed it a while ago, got all the oil off of it. Uh, I've been cutting up, you know, here, hacked up a bunch of stuff. I think it's got a, it's a 25 or 26 inch bar on it, is what I measured back to the plate. It may, that may be incorrect. It's a 86 drive links on a 404 pitch. That's an 80 gauge on that thing. But you can see this pine and even uh, that big hackberry right there. I just come out here and blew through all this stuff today. So I still don't have the saw tuned completely yet. I do have the machine set to wide open flow to the saw. The saw will handle 28 gallons a minute is what it'll handle. And I've got the, uh, the machine only flows 26 gallons a minute. It's running about 2,600 and some odd uh, PSI, which hits that one kind of perfect because it's just under spec on what it is. There's an oak right there I cut pieces off of. I'm going to hop up in the cab and I'm going to set the camera, clamp it to one of the uh, foot controls there. I do have a large piece of oak right there that I'll spin over here and cut. If there's one thing that I don't like about the machine, and I'm going to fix that, is the lights on it. You can actually, after I look back at it, I don't know how I missed it, and I, it, you know, I just... At the point where I was at, I was just ready to get the darn thing and, and be done with it because I can swap this out. It'd probably be better. I swap it and put what I want to on is the darn lights. Them halogen bulbs, man. <laughs> they <laughs> they ain't hitting on much and ain't nothing on the back of it back here. But like I said, I'm gonna fix that. I just had too, too many other things. So Wednesday made two weeks I've had it. And of course this week worked on the grapple saw, putting that on there. So I have been very, very busy uh, leading up to this point and trying to do jobs at the same time. And then also I was down, you know, uh, a day there we had some rain and then I had that uh, surgery on my face where they took the basal cell out and got that done. So I really did good doing what I, all I got done and online. But we're gonna crawl up in here and get situated shut the door I'll show y'all what this thing looks like as I'm looking at the screen there and you can turn these interior lights on and off in here turn it by that switch I really like to set up of it you can get into the into the menu there This is what I've got the settings on the thing. So I've got the open and close set to wide open flow on five. I've got the rotate set down on two. That's all it needs on that. It's plenty fast enough there. But uh, that you can get into everything on this dude, man. You can go back right there. You can cut the camera on. So even in the dark with no light on the back, it, it shows uh, it shows up real good. That full warning screen goes away. It gives you where your accelerator is, where you got it set at, and then your fuel and the hydraulic temperature and water temperature. So right now, you see I have no heat in the hydraulics. <clears throat> I'm gonna, uh, because that will change things quite a bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run it here. It will get a little heat going in it. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp y'all. <coughs> See, I can open and close it. But see, that's two separate circuits right there. Those warm oil and cold oil makes a huge difference on uh, what's going on. I'm gonna track up here. Let's see. Let's see if I can grab this thing right there. Turn it 
turn the camera over where I can see. Very good. Boy, you can hear that saw. So on these joysticks, I've got extra buttons that I'm not used to. It's going to take me just a little bit, which I'm doing pretty good right now. Because on my other machine, my Kubota, to make it rotate, I had to hit a momentary button on my left stick and work the grapple open and close. And that throws the diverter in on that. So now I've got a two-way toggle on my left stick for this. So I can, you know, I can work the rotate and the open and close at the same time and I had never been able to do that see with the Kubota because I was just running it off of one circuit that's what I was doing so that's different we'll grab up a uh, piece of oak we'll get to a little bit bigger piece here can't cut a tree down with it I mean because you you would have to visualize you'd have to be stretched all the way out it's not made to fail but I can't cut limbs out of trees with it though That's green as gore goods right there. I just cut it uh, the other day. I'm trying to pick up pieces I know they ain't gonna have metal in them. See how it's a full cut there. All the way to the tip. I like that. That's well, that's the reason why I was holding that and you know save that piece out like that <clears throat> because I wanted to do it in this video all right I'm gonna take the uh, camera now and I'm gonna set it outside where y'all can hear how it all uh, sounds I know I got heat in the, in the hydraulic oil but it's not it had even moved yet on the thing now I can go in there and I can see what the actual temperature is on it if I want to it'll tell me all that stuff but this thing has got some uh some crazy cooling on it the cooling package on it you can actually when this thing is running you can actually stand i can feel the air all the way out to here moving off of it and that's at an idle when you run it wide open so the the cooling on it should not be no issue on anything that i ever want to run and this is uh just the beginning of what I what I will be doing as far as uh, 
<clears throat> attachments go. So this is going to be a cool journey. back inside the cab with me so this is one pretty neat thing take it and you spin it around and get all the sawdust out of it I can actually go up and get it upside down you may not be able to see that right now but the head is completely upside down up there and I'm spinning it around and around all the sawdust out of it. Right. We're gonna head back into the shop. You gotta have these hoses like this. See, I got hose wrap on them now. You see what it looks like. I did just like I said, I did two, two, and two. But you gotta remember, this thing pivots all the way this way, and it pivots all the way past flat and up. And I'm gonna show you Watch the hoses. We're gonna come in now. All right, that's all the way in. We're gonna go out. So I hope that the people who have been really concerned about that understand this right here if you had the head sitting like this and you had those hoses short when you went to right there you would snatch every one of them all and these ain't cheap either i ended up spending uh on the hoses all the hydraulics that i had to do was about 2300 or so that was for uh, 12 lines six sets of quick connects so that's 12 pieces there those quick connects are not cheap either by the way uh, the fittings all the fittings that went back there like I said about, about total about 2300 which is not bad because these are four all four wire hoses too and this one right here is three quarter but uh so yeah you got to have those hoses like that and there's any kind of attachments that's got hoses on it even the war tall head that kevin runs the same way it's like that where it's got where it's got flex where it can uh where it can give and, and move and it has to Barn chain oil is right there where you put it in. I filled it up. So tomorrow we're going to run it. I'm going to check for leaks one more time over here. After I've washed it, I got one I want to look at and check, make sure it's okay.
the return and the case drain. This is going to be the saw return. And this is the case drain coming into it. I punched a hole through the lid on the return. This is the return filter right under this lid. And I took, if you look, that's a uh, bulkhead half inch fitting with the JIC on each side. When I first put it in, I didn't have no seal on it at all. I was just gonna try it to see if it would seal. And uh, this thing has a pressurized tank on it like all the excavators do. And it was seeping a little bit. So what I did was, is I got two bonded washers and I put one underneath it. I pulled the cover back off, put one underneath it, and put one on top of it. And the one on top of it's gonna be the one that's actually doing the sealing. But you can see the, you see the bonded washer right there. And so far, it's not seeping any out. So there's gonna be an install video on this thing showing how we installed it. And I'm I'm really I'm ecstatic with it the way it turned out. I mean it's all factory looking, which was what I was after. I wanted to look, you know, look right. I didn't want it to look like it was just kind of just thrown together. I've looked at some installs that, that's been done by even dealers and they've just thrown stuff on the machine and and all that and it just it don't look real good i had a couple of seeps in this thing last night and i i tended to them and i think i got them i think i got the two of them they're leaking i believe i do i don't see any oil that's the best thing for it that sawdust sticking to it to help drive the rest of the oil that's kind of on it but I got everything put back in the center of it. Right there, the only thing I have not done yet, I've got to get me some of that dual lock 3M Velcro to Velcro this control box right there to that wall. That's the only thing I had done. It'll be fine sitting right there where it's at right now. The joystick all together and back on it and got that done. So tomorrow, I'm gonna post this video tonight. It's 8.55 now. Kevin's gonna be here at 6.30 in the morning. I've already got the chipper sitting over on the job. We're gonna do a 40 tree removal tomorrow. And we're gonna take this machine with us. It'll be the maiden voyage, the first uh, job with this machine. And we're gonna try to get it done all tomorrow. I hope we're done by three o'clock. We should be if not a little bit before uh, we'll see how if you want to follow along what we're doing and follow me on instagram cotton top three i'll be posting some stories on there of what we're doing running this thing and i've been saving that job specifically for this machine here once i got it up and running so it's going to be a really good one to uh see what the performance is going to be of course, you know, I, everything out there I just cut up was was hardwood. There was just one pine. And so it ain't, nothing's really going to phase this thing on the larger cuts. Just like my bell tree cutter, just like the processor, just like uh, my grapple saw on there when you're making those full cuts. Sometimes you have to let off of it just a little bit and then hit it right back. And two, also you got to realize too that when you're the grapple will hold but the piece may move just a little bit in the grapple as you're cutting and so if that does it's going to kind of throw you off i mean it just be just the same thing as, as cutting with a chainsaw and trying to twist the saw at the same time it's going to kind of bind with you so you got to be mindful of that stuff and you need that piece sucked up all the way up in the belly so you don't need a piece sitting wonky in it because it's just like a chainsaw chainsaw cuts better when it's at a 90 degree angle to the piece that you're cutting same difference with this thing too but i'm sitting there listening to the saw run i think it's really close to that 8,000 rpm mark right there because that's what all my other ones sound like so i'm gonna leave it in here tonight and make sure i'll be able to see the floor and make sure there's no you know nothing leaking in it uh tonight 
Let me check my fluid level. Yeah, I'm good. Don't need it. We're right there at the bottom. You check this one with it stretched all the way out, all the way out in the bucket cylinder, all the way out too. Machine with the short stick and the counterweight is absolutely on the money. Perfect for this thing right here. 1,500 some odd pounds. It don't even know it's on there. Crazy. I just got to get used to that left joystick because I've got the rotator toggle on it, left and right on that. And then below that is the button that opens the valve on the saw valve to make the saw run. So it'll take me just a second to get accustomed to taking my thumb off the toggle and going down and hitting the button to make the saw work. Because again, on my Kubota, I hit that momentary button on it to just make it rotate and that's going to take me a little time to just kind of get my brain accustomed to uh to doing that by tomorrow tomorrow afternoon it'll be good to go i got tools sitting everywhere i got tools on top of that garbage can that stool's loaded up the table that table was completely clean before we started the other day on this thing you can see what it's looking like now but i appreciate y'all watching and following me along on this journey of putting this thing together and you're getting to see it work tonight and it's just cool man I, I love this stuff i love equipment love to see it work and just think about the engineers the guys and girls that design these things to run and put them together the all the stuff that goes in it i mean it's crazy you sit there and you look at it and you kind of take that in a little bit because everything on it, I mean, every little bend, every weld, every nut piece, it's there for a purpose. And it's an engineer had a part in designing it. And I'll say this too, this thing is pretty darn easy to work on. Everything's out in the open, really nice. And it's not, I hadn't found anything yet that's like difficult on it that you just can't do, but I'm kind of expecting we may have a leak tomorrow. We may not have a leak tomorrow, but I'm kind of prepared for it. I got O-rings on my truck and tools and all that hoopla. So I'm ready to go on that. I'll probably stick a few more wrenches on it. In the hydraulic world, these service wrenches are, are incredible to use. You can buy cheap sets at uh, Harbor Freight in the Pittsburgh. That's what those are. And they're dang good, man. I mean, they're they're, they're 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 really good i mean ain't no need spending a lot of money but they they really help you out on hydraulic lines in tight places they're pretty handy as well as crow's foots do too and a dang good chisel and a hammer in a tight spot it always comes through also so next step uh we'll probably swap i do have a brand new light bar sitting over in that bottom box we'll get it on the front i gotta order another light bar like that when i go on the back take those two lights off and we're gonna get her lettered and we'll get her fixed up this thing's gonna be sharp as a tack once i get done lettering it up it's gonna be really really slick um i'm probably gonna spend way too much money on it lettering but i like to look sharp i like to look sharp and me and rook we kind of have this little competition on who can outdo each other with the most stickers on a piece of equipment so you got that going on too i can't let him outdo me and he can't let me outdo him either so it's, uh, yeah. So I'm about to go in. I'll get this video ready. Appreciate all y'all. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.